I love those recorders that look like a taser. <laughs> or something out of Ghostbusters. Oh no, it's all good, it's all good. We did this uh, last week in Houston and uh, it was a lot of fun. It's normally, uh, it's a solo workshop, but uh, I think uh, it's good to have input from other of my colleagues in the industry because uh, it's great to, you know, it's like, oh, I forgot to bring up this point and this point and we can have some fun. So you guys read the description about what this is? I mean, it's Q&A, but it's also a little bit interactive. So we're going to like talk about the video game recording process, uh, how it differs from an anime dubbing session. Uh, and if you guys have questions along the way, we can do that as well. But it's also kind of a hybrid workshop deal where we can have some people do some fight sounds and, you know, do some attack yells and some... Uh, fight. Oh, look at, yeah, hello again. Hogan! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then death screams. You know, we'll, 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 uh, we'll let you guys shout out. It's like, how will we let our volunteer die today? Will they be disemboweled, uh, decapitated, you know, set on fire, or they electrocuted? You know, all sorts of all fun. All at the same time. All, all at the same yeah. time, yes. Um, as far as gaming goes, uh, some of the games that I have worked on include um, Borderlands and Borderlands 2. Uh, Walking Dead Survival Instinct, uh, Aeon Flux, Stuntman Ignition, uh, one of the Halos, either Legends or Wars, something, one of the Halos. Um, lots of the DBZ games, uh, a few of the Full Metal Alchemist games, the Yu Yu Hakusho game, um, stuff, things, some DLC for other stuff that's coming out. Uh, um, Captain Smiley, I was in that thing. That thing's awesome. Captain Smiley means the guy with the comic jumper? Yeah, comic jumper. Comic jumper, yeah. Yeah. Never heard of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> comic jumper's awesome. Uh, and some other stuff from Twisted Pixel. Uh, those guys are fun to work with. Cool beans. Uh, I'm on Street Fighter, uh, the DBZ games, Naruto, Bleach. Oh, yeah, Street Fighter. Really? Yeah, we are, we're on Street Fighter. Yeah, we're together. on Street Fighter. That was the one of the ones we did together. Yeah. Yeah. Cross Tekken, mm -hmm. I do believe. Yes. Tales of Symphonia for the Wii, uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, um, lots of stuff through the years. My first one was Blood Rain 2. I was in that one too. Yeah, for yeah. That. I was in Blood Rain yeah. 2 as well. It's like basically Funimation is on Blood Rain. You know, Laura Bailey is Blood Rain. Oh, yeah. Look it up. Yeah. It's like a big I'm, boss monster. I'm getting news 10 years too late. <laughs> it's like, oh, it was blood rain? <laughs> like, what is this? What? <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm not the only narrator on DBZ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even the new one. Yeah. But uh, I play one on TV. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll start at the beginning. Uh, people always ask, what is the difference in between recording anime and recording video games? You guys know how the anime dub process works, or do we need to summarize that? No. Yeah, no answer. So, no so answers. So sum summarize, we go. Yes. Um, how anime dubbing, for the most part, works is, um, you know, upon all the casting and all of that stuff being done, we bring in an actor. Uh, the actor works with the director. The director describes the scene. This is, what's, we're, uh, this is what's going on. Let's preview it. They'll preview it. Uh, there was, there's a beep system set up where there's three beeps and where the fourth beep would be, that's where the dialogue or the noises that they're making because they're on fire or because they're jumping or punching, that's where that stuff takes place. You listen to it. You listen to what the seiyuu is doing, the Japanese voice actor. You know, um, what's, how are they emoting? Are they running? Are they screaming? Is this a, something that they're thinking to themselves? You take all of that into context and you take uh, the animation into context and then it is your turn to do it. You get the same three beeps and then you perform what you think that character would do in that particular moment. Boom. Boom. Uh, in the video game session world, uh, it's similar in that we record solo, one actor at a time. Uh, the animation is not a complete final product where anime is. You see the finished product, there's what my, there's what my character looks like. Very rarely do you see the finished stuff in a game session. We're typically looking at a script for the most part, yeah. and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, according to cutscene stuff, but it may be in the animatic stage or, or very rough animation. Um, sometimes we are fortunate enough to like uh, have some sort of rendering like, this is probably what they're going to look like. Oh, okay, it's a guy with huge shoulders, and he's got horns coming out of his head, and he's got demon eyes. Like, you at least get that much rather than, like, it's a bad guy. 
Yeah, you here's this, this stick figure is you. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then sometimes there's no context at all. I mean, I'll, I'll get called into voice on a game. There's no rehearsal, by the way, on anime or games. There's no, like, here's your script. Study it, rehearse yeah. it. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. <clears throat> no, we come in. We don't know a thing until the director says, okay, this is the plot of the game, and 30 seconds later, you're off and running. Yeah, but part of the reason that you're hired and that they seek out people who can do this is because they can adjust to that and do it immediately. There yeah. are people who, you know, believe it or not, have, you know, they have a really hard time figuring that out. Like, okay, you know, you're, you're a pancake man and you're fighting the syrup monster and you're in the land of uh, waffles trying to get back to pancake land. Okay, man, go. Rather than like, oh, I don't understand. What should that sound like? No, that person, you are not hired. Yeah. The person who's like, cool, I can do it. That person's hired. Yeah, when you get into the whole, what's my motivation and all that, you know, the method act and all that stuff, like, it's just a different world. Yeah, your cool. motivation is to make the director happy. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. So when people say, like, why did you do that voice? It's like, because that's what they hired me to do. Right. It's like, that take is so overdone. It's like, wasn't my call. Right. You know, I'm, I'm not there to contest with the director and challenge them saying, no, this is how it's done. Like, no, I'm there to please the director, first and foremost, and or the client in the case of a video game. The writer, the producer is there in the session to kind of help the, the context of yeah. it all. Yeah, sometimes you're performing before a jury, which all must agree on, hey, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes because of that, sometimes, oftentimes because of that, it may not even be the best one. It's like, this is the one that they could all agree on. Like, ah, that one sounds too much like this. Everyone else is like, but it sounds good. No, I'm not going to give up. Do it this way. Fine. Do it that way. Uh, okay. <laughs> Next line. Yeah. So we're sitting there, like, like, they're taking, like, five minutes at a time. So we're checking Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And, like, well, at least I'm getting paid. <laughs> getting paid to sit here and wait while the uh, committee deliberates. Yeah. Sometimes that's nerve-wracking as well, though, because you're in an isolation booth, right? Yep. So unless they have a little button on where they can, you can hear what's going on, um, if you are a neurotic actor, you're like, what are they talking about? Are they talking about me? Are they talking about me? They could be talking about me. They could say I'm terrible. They think I'm terrible, don't they? Oh, my God. They think I'm terrible. <laughs> and then they're going, yeah, we'll be right back with you. What do you want for, what do you think we should get for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you get really crazy when they're, like, going... Yeah. We're like, oh, we're going to discuss this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Table flip, everything. Yeah. It's all okay, that was great. Yeah. That was great. Moving on. We're going to recast you. What? No. Um, <laughs> we're, we're moving way on. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're definitely moving on. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, Let's see, uh, there's a lot of Japanese games that get localized, or um, they get the localization treatment. So in that case, instead of the final animation, which is rarely done, or we might see a, a uh, rough version, um, the Japanese audio is already recorded. So we can hear that as a reference. So if the game is being animated to Japanese audio, it's very important that we at least match the timing of the audio files. Mm. It's like, it's coming this way. It's like, it says that in Japanese. So when I say, it's coming this way, I can't say, it's coming this way. That's too long. Yeah. It can't be too short or too long. Yeah, they have the audio files there and they have them isolated and they have them trimmed off at the beginning and the end of like, this is as long as it can be. So you have to hit it really close to that within like, you know, like a, probably like a tenth of a second. Like, one-thirtieth of a second would be frame rates for anime, but, like, you can probably get it within one-tenth of a second mm -hmm. for a length of a file like that. But otherwise, yeah, it's exactly what Kyle said. The, uh, the Japanese game stuff I've noticed, too, in, in working in L.A., is uh, we'll, we'll tend to record in sets of three. So the script is broken down just by character. So you're not seeing the context. My character is answering questions and asking questions and like there's no context. It's just in order from one to 500, for example. The master script is sitting on the client's laptop or whatever. So they can do that and it's like, oh, what's the context? Who am I talking to in this scene? It's like, all right, in this scene, you're doing this. Like, all yeah. right, cool. The master script often looks like um, two, two New York City phone books. It really does. When they, when they want to kill trees, then yes. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 had about five or six binders that were just tomes to yeah i mean you yeah. really felt like you were what's the arc it's the, you know yeah. it's nuts 
And uh, it's like, please turn in. And everything is, has tabs in it. It's like, this is the battle scene. This is the cut scene. This is the you know character select, whatever. Mm. It's all subdivided by character and broken down. And then the master script, of course, is in the hands of the writer and the producer. And uh, sometimes even the director has to go, what is the context? I don't even mm. <laughs> But yeah, we'll do like, uh, you know, three in a row, for example. They'll say, uh, follow, uh, you know, listen to it in Japanese. And then you'll hear the beeps, just not that you have to match lip sync, but just as, this is your starting gun. Like, right. beep, beep, beep. And then I have to follow and match that intensity. Like, not too loud, not too soft. It has mm -hmm. to match the intensity and the timing. And um, the, uh, the frustrating thing for those of us who go back and play it afterwards is that is if it uh, if it doesn't match in Japanese the animation it's certainly not going to match in English so you have an <laughs> with cool man this was a huge problem for Street Fighter Four um, the cutscene and the OVA that came with the bonus edition and all that it's like the animation wasn't done yet we had animatics which are just a another way of saying comic strip yeah so yeah. <laughs> And we tried to match, and then it came out, and it's like, did you guys even try? And it was like, we just got drunk at the studio. It's like, eh, it matches, man. Okay. Just say anything. It'll be awesome. The answer Kids lies, will love it. the heart of battle is in my pants. What? <laughs> what is it? Yeah, it's uh, kind of crazy. But, um, uh, and depending on the director, you know, every director is unique. You know, Talison Jaffe uh, directs us on the Street Fighter franchise, and uh, he's kind of like a soldier that gets in the trenches with you because he wants the screams to sound a certain way. So he'll blow his voice out along with us, which is kind of nice. So mm -hmm. if you have a long Japanese word like Tatsumaki Senpukak, it's like, what was that again? It's like, oh, let's do it phonetically slow. Tatsumaki Senpukak. Like, oh, okay. And then we'll do hurricane kick. Can I just say hurricane kick? I'm like, no. Can I say fireball? No, Hadouken. Hadouken. Yeah, and people, and people go like, hey, it's Hadouken, right? In Ryu? It's like, no. Capcom says it's Ryu, and it's Hadouken. It's like, I, if they say it's pronounced peanut butter, I will pronounce it peanut butter. It's like, I will say whatever. And, and uh, the client is either there, or in the case of Capcom, they're on Skype. In Japan, listening intently, even if they don't understand us, we have a translator there. Mm. And uh, they're usually approving the performance anyway, whether it's an anime or, or game. Is that okay? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's uh, how you tell it? very good. <laughs> so <God. laughs> yeah. If they didn't approve, uh, again. <laughs> we just do it again. It's like, okay, so for example, doing three takes of. The answer lies in the heart of battle. The answer lies in the heart of battle. The answer lies in the heart of battle. The answer lies in the heart of battle? Deliberate, deliberate, yeah. deliberate. It's like, uh, another set of three. Do it faster. The answer lies in the heart of battle. You're just there to please the client. That is your goal mm -hmm. as, um, as an actor, as it were. Yes. And that's for the, uh, that's for the localized video games. Yes. Yes. Uh, something like League of Legends, which is American-based, then there's, uh, you know, the characters don't have a lot of dialogue, so I could be done in like 20 minutes or whatever. But if you have a very verbose character, you could have a, a session that lasts four hours, eight hours or longer, and they'll divvy it up over multiple days. Yeah. Or, or you could have a session like Troy's sessions for The Last of Us and have a session that lasts a year and a half or two years. <laughs> yes. For several times a week. Yeah, you can have an iPhone game, a mobile game that'll record in a day, or you can have something like Resident Evil. It takes a year of Liam O'Brien's life to direct, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or Last of Us, or or whatever. And uh, Final Fantasy, something of that scope, that took like six months, and <laughs> it's just hard to fathom that it would take that long. But then again, there'll be what's called pickups, where there'll be additional dialogue uh, scripted. Or perhaps we need to re-record a line for yeah. a technical reason or the acting was off or because they made these other changes. So the actor will come back in for a pickup session to pick up or re-record mm -hmm. those lines. And then there'll be alts. Alt is short for alternate, we'll, we'll say come that. Um, Give me a safety, the director will say. Safety is just do exactly what you did on the last take just to have another version of it. Yeah, in case there's something glitchy with the audio file. Yep, yep. That can happen sometimes. Mm. There's a lot of power and uh, major props to the engineers out there who uh, 
they're the ones who hit record and save and chop the and, and do everything with the uh, the yeah. takes and after. label it so you can find it. Uh, yes, yeah. they also do. Uh, they also create these files called references. You know, the actor could record on The Last of Us and then come in six months later. And they don't remember. They've worked on a thousand things between that time. So they're like, what did my character sound like again? So they'll pull up an MP3. It's like, this is what you sound like. We, we took select lines and made a little compilation. It's like, okay, peat and repeat. The answer lies in the heart of battle. The answer lies in the heart of battle. No, no, no. Softer. Like, okay. That sort of thing. Yeah. Totes, my goats, broats. Broats. Questions? Does it make sense? We're going too fast? We're good? That's a question up there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, can you talk about what representation you might have as voice actors or the general value of having representation? Ooh, yeah. Sure. Um, I have representation. Um, uh, it, as far as it being of value, it, you're going to get more auditions for things that you may or may not have been able to audition before uh, without having an agent or uh, representation. Um, it really depends on where you live and who you work with as far as the importance of the representation. For a lot of gaming and anime and et cetera, et cetera, usually the people working on it come to me directly because, you know, they either know me through this or, you know, through working in some other capacity, like, hey, I've got this other game for you. Or, hey, um, someone referred you to me. I'm recording a game in New York uh, and Senator Nicholas said you were great. Uh, can you send me some stuff? I'm like, sweet, I will do that. Uh, what my representation frequently does is hey, we need you uh, to audition for this McDonald's commercial, or hey, um, they're, they're recording this huge video game franchise over here, and they want you to audition for these things. Um, you may have already known about it. Yeah, he's already told me about it. Cool, we're going through us to do it, et cetera, et cetera, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. To me, it's the same thing as like having a lot of training. You can, you can work without it, but it's just better to have it. You know, you can be a voice actor without training, or you could be a better voice actor with training. You know, you could be a, a voice actor without a representation, or you could get a lot more work and a lot more notoriety with representation. Yeah, you're, that seems you're, to be about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to increase your chances, your opportunity. It's all about being where the work is, and uh, having an agent has opened up a whole world of, of things I would not be able to gather uh, auditions on my own. So. I read for commercials all the time. I tend to book mostly anime and uh, video game stuff, but I still think it's important that I'm still reading, like reading for Disney and Nickelodeon and all that. Yeah, I mean, you got to try. Yeah. Um, is it necessary to have an agent? No. Um, and in my my realm of understanding is that uh, the agents don't tend to deal with the anime stuff because it tends to pay on the lower side of it. So Depends. They, um, because of the, like, for Funimation, because of the frequency in mm -hmm. which we get it, they recognize that, like, oh, it's uh, this, but it's this all the time. Mm -hmm. So they want to deal with it. Oh, they, okay, that's a unique situation then, yeah. Uh, my, my case, my agent's like, ah, it's not worth our time. Yeah. <laughs> Frequently the agents are confused, like, ah, it's not worth my time because I don't understand that it's a five-year job. Yeah. You know, they don't get there, like, oh, it's that much per hour? Like, it's not a per hour thing. It's, it's going to take... Five billion hours to finish this show. Yeah. So, right. So and they have a clue into that. And an agent is supposed to make ten percent above what you take home. So if you have an agent or a prospective agent that wants to charge you to represent you, run the other direction. Or you know, if they want to take a cut of your money, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's that's not a way in, and that's not you know, don't let anyone talk you into that. Like this is how everyone starts. No, it's not. That's how you get robbed. Yeah. So. Pretty much. You had a follow-up? Yeah, in a similar vein, uh, unions. Are you two unions? And uh, I know a lot of anime work doesn't uh, tends to not be unions. Uh -huh. What about video game stuff? Are you guys union? Do you, and do you also do union work? Or what is your opinion versus union versus not union? Um, let's see. I live in Texas. Texas is a right-to-work state. So I am uh, non-union, but I do union work all the time. Uh, it's just the way the state is set up. They hire the best person for the job, and if that person happens to be a union person, cool, and if that person happens to be a non-union person like me, then I get the job. It's all even playing field. Um, there are places uh, such as uh, California, uh, probably here, probably uh, here in New Jersey and in New York area, Maybe. where it's, uh, if it's a union job and you're not union, you can't have that job. 
Um, but luckily, it's had very little effect on me living in Texas. Um, because of that, because of the whole bulk of the work in Texas, you know, both being commercial and video games and anime and whatever else, um, the pay is pretty similar. Um, and the uh, residual aspect, especially for anime and for gaming, is 100% the same, which is its session fees, and that's about it. Yeah. So um, it really, you know, as far as my opinion of it, because I live in Texas, my opinion of it is uh, I like that the unions exist, and I wish that uh, it was a little bit stronger where I live. But that's going to take a lot more than just me saying so for that to happen. So, yeah, the 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 top tier, like the cartoon gigs on Disney Nickelodeon, for example, those are union gigs. So my agent, for example, is a union franchised agency. So again, it's an arsenal thing uh, to join the union. You can't just join; you have right. to qualify to join now. Yes, because SAG and After it used to be two separate unions. Now they're one. So. Um, that's like in LA, it costs three grand, but that's initiation fee. You have to qualify to join. Uh, you know, you have to be booked on a union gig, and then you yeah. qualify, and then all this stuff. But yeah, so there's a very high percentage that a percentage chance that you will book some nice paying union gig, and then if you want to join the union, all the money from that gig just goes bye bye towards joining the union. But, you know, then again, if it pays off for you to be in the union and you get more stuff, then it certainly paid for itself. It's nice to, to get, like, uh, you know, benefits. If you make a certain amount on union fees uh, or union rates, you can qualify for insurance. You're not automatically given that. Uh, you know, certain work conditions are enforced and everything. But uh, most games, I think about 80% of video games are non-union. Um, but, you know, that's a client choice, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not necessarily a money choice. Sometimes it's just a matter of, ah, we don't want to do the paperwork. Yeah, sometimes the money is the same. Yeah, or Pretty sometimes it's same. more. Yeah. I have auditioned for non-union stuff that paid way more than anything. It's like, what, really? Yeah. Okay. And I've worked on uh, non-union anime that pays double of what the union rate is. Yeah. So. So everyone's all over the map with that, <laughs> honestly. I just want to work. Yeah. You know? Most actors just want to work. I think we had that come up last weekend in Houston with this similar union question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people I know that are actors, they just want to act, and that's it. They don't want to act and sell curtains, or they don't want to act and have to do some other bunch of crap. They want to act. So if that's union or non-union or whatever, um, depending on who the actor is, that's what they do. Yeah. I don't. I really don't like the political underbelly of it all. It gets kind of ugly because some people are like really pro and they're really against. Like you're a scab and blah, blah, blah. It's like I just want to work. I just this yeah. is what I moved here for. I didn't join a club and to get bullied or, or whatever. You yeah. know, but all that. So yeah, that's just one aspect of the VO world. Yeah. You guys have to look forward to. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm certainly glad they exist. I'm certainly glad they're out yeah. there looking out for the actor. And um, I wish uh, future. Um, uh, prosperity to all involved. Oh, sure. I want it to do, I definitely want it to uh, increase uh, its strength and yeah. magnitude. We got folks like uh, Bob Bergen, who voices Porky Pig. He's on the animation board at SAG AFTRA, and he's like, his goal is to make it stupidly easy for a client to log on to their website and with a couple of clicks, boom, your project is now union. I think that would make it more appealing to the clients who go going like, I don't want to call and fill out fax paperwork and all this stuff. It's like, okay, let's let's compartmentalize yeah, and make, make it easy. easy. Make it easy. That's yeah, just what yeah. everyone wants. A 1040 easy form yeah. for union work. Like this, this, done. Done, done, done. Yeah. Awesome sauce. Any other questions? Yes. Um... For me, it's, it's a combination of things. Like, uh, like if I'm doing a, a localization, I get my inspiration from the original performance, from the seiyuu. I get my inspiration from what the animation looks like. Um, I'm sure in some osmosis type way, I get my inspiration from other actors and other performances, but I tend to not like uh, be a uh, mimic of, uh, of anyone. In fact, I'm probably not a very good mimic. I don't sound like... Here's my vocal imitation. That doesn't sound anything like him. I know because I'm not a good mimic. Um, but probably like the energy and the, the tone of voice and someone's approach to something in their work, I, I might key into that. I'm like, I really like that. I'll do it. You know, here's my take of it. 
Yeah. That's inspiration. I'm a big movie buff, so if I'm reading for a character and see a picture and maybe something comes to mind, whether it's the description or the physical picture of the character, something will pop up in my mind, like some obscure character in a movie that, like, uh, for example, something in Dragon Ball, I had to voice a bad guy, and Chris Abbott said, you can do whatever you want with this vocally. I'll just show you him and come up with a voice. So I came up with something that I saw in Clockwork Orange. He was like a truant officer, and he was like, oh, yeah, mm, yeah, you decided to skip school, hmm? So I decided to do that voice, and it was just like, okay, cool, my love of movies is get, is piercing through. And yeah, he, he really touched on something important about the impressions thing. You know, there's a million people that do Christopher Walken, but most people do impressions of people doing impressions yeah, of Walken. Yeah, it's like Jay Moore's impression of Christopher Walken or right, something. Right, right. Uh, which in some instances pays off, um, but frequently doesn't. Yeah. yeah. And that's a whole different realm of people saying, hey, guy, I do impressions of Vegeta and I do impressions of so-and-so. Can I be a voice actor? It's like, well... We already have a Vegeta. We do. They, we do. And he's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's not going anywhere. So, yeah. so no? So, no. But, um, <laughs> but the thing that's uh, in that sort of realm of doing impressions is voice matching. Now, it, it's not like the main thing, but we do this in video games a lot, where like a, video, a movie tie-in. Yeah. And say the celebrity didn't want to do it or they couldn't didn't have afford time it. or whatever. They'll throw us those scraps. They'll yeah. say, we need you to sound like Seth Rogen. It's like, okay. So I did that for a game. It sounded like Seth Rogen. It's like, all right, well, thanks. Yay. I got a game fee out of it. That mm -hmm. works. That, that. Nice. But that was once. Yeah. <laughs> and also, um, it could be in the audition process where they'll have like, you know, here's a character description. And also they're like, you know, here's what we're going for. And they'll have a picture of like Lance Henriksen or someone like that. And like, oh, okay. I can't sound like him, but my impression of Lance Henriksen will be in the right ballpark without sounding like him because I don't sound like him. So mm -hmm. I can give them kind of what they want without it being a uh, imitation yeah. or an impression. And the interesting, you know, crapshoot that is auditions, they'll they'll you know will frequently see something in the specs. The specs are the description of what the client wants. The sound is like oh, we want Lance Henriksen, and then. You don't get booked, and then you, the game comes out, and it's like, that sounds nothing like Lance Henriksen. They, they just changed their mind along the way. Maybe they heard an audition that was totally polar opposite of what was asked for, mm -hmm. and, the, and then the actor just took a gamble, and it paid off. Yeah. Or um, their cousin needed a job. Or, yes, yes, there's that whole nepotism. Hire Billy. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that whole uh, celebrity realm of, like, why do people buy Call of Duty? Well, it's not because Gary Oldman's in it. Even though he's awesome. It's know, because Call of Duty. Because of Call of Duty. Yeah. You know, people want to talk smack on online with their friends. That's why they play Call of Duty. It's not because of the cast. You had a follow-up question? Yeah, this question is to the question of, like, do you guys ever do, like, throwaway characters? Or... Um, I play a lot of trannies. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's fantastic. I voiced one on Loop on the third one. I mean, it was technically a woman, but Sonny Strait directed it, and he goes, "I want you to just be a, just be a, a drag queen." <laughs> so it's pretty fun. Yeah, but full on girl. There are so many girls that do it better than me. <laughs> I'd rather hire them. Yeah, yeah. Like That's. Uh, I was mentioning that you know a week or two ago. I'm not sure if it was in the same panel we have, but there's most actors you know, feel in some capacity that they really can do anything. And in some instances, they're right. As long as they have enough imagination, whatever, they can do it. But the thing is, depending on how specific it is, there is always, always, always going to be someone who can do it a lot better. Like, I can do a little girl voice, but it's not going to sound like a real little girl. And it certainly won't sound as good as even like an adult that does little girl voices. Like, I, I'm not going to beat Monica Rial at making a little girl voice. You know, I'm not going to be Lindsay Seidel or any of these other people that, like, that's what they excel at. It'll just be like, you know, if I, if Mike, you have to do 50 voices for this thing and you're doing all of them. Okay, I can, I can do it. But if it's like, you know, if there's a casting process going on, I'm not going to win. You know, if there's a, you know, if they're casting for a teen boy lead, I can pull something like that off, but I certainly can't do it as well as, like, Todd Habercorn or Yuri Lowenthal or Johnny Bosch or, or Vic or any of these guys. It's not going to, you know, they their voice is better suited for that. So, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, another frequent question we get a lot is like, do you choose what you try out for? It's like, uh, to a degree, sometimes they'll be like, here, pick, pick from this list of characters who you think you're best for. And then other times we'll get specific characters. Like, yeah. we want you to read for this. Yeah, it's the like, director brought you in for a specific reason. Yeah, it's like, I didn't get to try out for the Walking Dead game. Would have loved to, but it's not my call. If my agent came to me and said, we want you to read for this, then cool, that's great. Um, but yeah, um, usually by that time, by the time I've heard about it, it's already long been cast. <laughs> so the, the director, I mean, you could speak to this because you are director and director's cast as well. Mm -hmm. uh, from the gaming perspective, um, uh, do you do you uh, do you reach out to an actor because you know they can do that, or you say, okay, I'm gonna have you read for this character because this is what you excel at, or are you gonna think outside the box a little bit and say, hey, here, go ahead and read for these others just in case. When I hold auditions and I'm calling people in, I always let them pick first. Okay. Like, you know, I want you to hear, you know, pick two or three that you'd like to read for. That way, if there is something they're like, I want to show Mike that I can do this, then I'm not going to. Um, nix that by saying read this okay but if they get through the three and it's not one of the three that I brought them in for I'm like cool take a look at this one I'll give you a couple minutes to read through it and be familiar with it and let me have it when you're ready and yeah. I'll go ahead and throw them that opportunity as well okay awesome yeah. now you hit upon something that uh, another cool uh, another important key aspect of voice acting cold read it's cold reads your ability to just read material right then and there it's like, what if I came to read for Mike three roles and he goes, hey, by the way, read for this. And like, I didn't study this. Oh, God, what do I do? You got to be ready for it. Yeah. That happens all the time. Mm -hmm. It's the ability to look at copy and go, okay, this is the stress word. This is probably the situation that's going on. And even if you're not 100% right, you got to at least be like 90% right. Otherwise, that you are proving that you cannot do this job. Because that's what the whole rest of the job is going to be, is like, say these 20 lines with no context. Yeah. We get that all the time. Interpret interpret context. Interpret the writer's intent. Yeah. We do this for any type of VO project, commercials and whatnot. you got to study it really fast. I'm like, what what is the point? What is the main emphasis yeah. on this thing? Look through the line. Is there any set of consonant and vowels that's going to be tricky for me? Say that a couple of times. Boom, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now I'm ready for it. And go. Yep. More questions? There's a few more. Oh, yes. You want to pick? I will pick. Over here. Um, my question is, do you mind doing an apparition? Like do I mind doing it? Yeah. No, it's awesome! <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're known for, you know? Yeah. Like, do the voice. Dance, monkey, dance. Yeah. <laughs> that voice is super fun. And that he's ridiculous and loud and a pervert. And so I get to be nothing like myself. <laughs> Nothing, not at all. Yeah. Your turn. Ah, okay, yes, sir. Have you ever had a line that was so badly written it tested the limits of your acting? Yes, but frequently, like if when I come across those, I will even tell the actor that. Like if I'm working in the uh, in the booth on something and a line comes up, I'm like, what? All right, I don't like this line. Make me like this line. It is your challenge. And I'll tell them that too. I'm like, this, I recognize that this is poorly written, either grammatically or whatever, when we have a time constraint that we're dealing with. If I can't think of anything else, then that line has to stay the way it is. And it is your job to make me think that that line is awesome. Mm -hmm. And if you can, then kudos to you. Another thing is improv. Uh, not only cold read, but improvisation is a huge, huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't participated in improv things a lot lately until last week, actually, because uh, Mike Spearhead's a, a great improv panel at certain conventions, and we get all the voice actors together, and we just get to let loose and think on your toes, and it's a little nerve-wracking. I'll be honest. I don't do it enough, but, I mean, it's an important thing to do because we're asked to, to, uh, to bring a piece of ourselves to the performance anyway, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thankful for that opportunity, and I want to encourage anyone out there who's interested in any kind of acting, on camera, on stage, VO, whatever, an improv class is worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. okay. And I believe they have lots of acting in this area. Just a little bit. There's yeah. a few things across the river yeah. uh, that yeah. way. Yes, that, that way. New York's that way. I learned that earlier. It's that way. Take a couple more questions, then I believe we're probably going to move into the, the yeah, we're audience in... participation portion of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. 
real quick, um, locations. It's probably about like uh, being at the right place and time. Uh -huh. uh, are there specific cities that did a lot of the jobs? And also, um, are there any good websites for searching for work? Okay. Um, as far as the cities for, for video games, um, lo the Los Angeles and probably San Francisco area have a lot of gaming going on. Um, in the Dallas area, we have a decent amount of stuff, like um, uh, EA frequently comes there, or Square Enix, um, uh, Gearbox is out of there, Terminal Reality is based out of there, uh, and then companies like Twisted Pixel and whatever else come in and record there as well. Um, I don't know about... I don't know about this area. I assume that there are some games that record in the New York area. There would have to be. Sure, yeah. The Dark Knight Rises was done here for the iPad and iPhone. Mm -hmm. Sean Schimmel, Goku, was Batman on that. <laughs> Directed by Tom Whelan, who directs Pokemon. So, um, so yeah, it takes place uh, lots of major cities where uh, <laughs> there happens to be a large percentage of actors. Oh, yeah. Um, outside of that, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I bet Vancouver probably has a lot of gaming. Games, I'm so. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're Canadian, go to Vancouver. Vancouver is the L.A. of Canada, I would say. Yeah. There's stuff in Toronto, too, which I guess we're close to mm -hmm. here. But um, And some game production, some of those AAA titles, uh, they'll be bi-coastal. They'll get some talent from Vancouver, some from L.A., maybe a little in Texas, all over the place. Mm -hmm. and I think that Walking Dead stuff was was Texas, but, I mean, Norman Reedus is L.A. Yeah, Norman Reedus and, uh, and Michael Rooker, Rooker was in it, too. Yeah. Uh, so I think they used them. I'm not sure how much... Uh, well, Troy was in it, so they had some L.A. people, but Troy's also relocated Texas folk. Yes. Um, but I think most of the rest of the supporting cast was Texas. So, yeah, it's a mishmash of people from all over the place. Yeah. I think L.A. is the best hotspot, the most amount of opportunity and breadth of diversity. Absolutely. Of work for commercials and on camera and on stage. You want to be on, on stage, then Broadway's right here. But mm -hmm. And VO is probably a good market here for commercial work, mm -hmm. but not animation work. Mm -hmm. It's very limited. I mean, like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, okay, well, how do you pay the rent? Yeah, probably. You have to poke a lot of mons and you a lot of goes. <laughs> that, that is very much the case. Yeah. All right, uh, so here we are. Let's move into the other portion of this where we're going to take some people from the audience and work you through some things. Uh, Mike and myself will just uh, have you do some fight sounds and we'll direct you, critique you, and then we'll kill you. And by the killing, we're going to leave the means by which death comes about in your hands. So we will take a suggestion from the audience of how they are going to die. That's nice. That's nice. So uh, I'm a firm believer in ladies first. So do we have any ladies who would like to? Yes, I saw your hand. Come on up front and uh, let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Takes It does take guts because uh, kind of an unfair advantage. You know, when we record in the booth, it's just the talent, the director and the client and the engineer. That's it. Here, you're staring at far more people, so I understand it's a little bit nerve-wracking, but what's your name? Um, I'm Audrey Morello. Hi, Audrey. Hey, Audrey. Cool. I'm just curious. Do you have any background in acting, any at high school or college or whatever? I, have one, I had musical theater for my major in um, high school for one year. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then I was cry tired of my teacher making me cry for my acting. So. Like literally making you yeah, cry? literally made me cry. It's like, you suck. <laughs> no, he made up the Oh. He made me cry. He was like, oh, just so you know, that was fake. Uh. He was like, oh my god. Okay, well, we won't make you cry. We'll just make you die. Play with your mind. Yes. Manipulation. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Puppet master. I do fan dubbing. You do fan dubs. Okay. All right, interesting. Now, have you done some fight sounds before in, in efforts? Fight sounds, efforts? I do efforts. work on my fighting noise. Okay. Right, here's your chance. Here's your, here's your chance. We're gonna we're gonna let you take you know take one is always the actor kind of playing the director. It's like here is my interpretation of the sound. So attack sounds. Let's have you do three in a row. Okay. There's three varieties obviously: small, medium, large. So your character in this video game has a huge sword. All right. So we want you to do your interpretation of a small, medium, and large attack sound. Excuse me if I sound like. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. They built an in intensity. Very nice. Good. 
And that's important. What I've noticed, uh, like a lot of our volunteers in, in other workshops across the country, well, they'll just do it like the same, like, ha, huh, ha, huh, ha, huh, or they'll start big. They'll start, yeah! It's like, that's your small attack zone? That's crazy. Okay. It's that's I'm so big. I know, so huge. My forearms are, you know. I'm Popeye. Yeah, yeah. Now, what we like on a video game, you, don't you hate button mashing a fighting game, for example, and everything sounds like, Hadouken, 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 you know. You want it's like something to sound a little bit different. So with your three takes this time, your small, medium, large, can you make the sounds a little bit different? Like you did all, like you did the intensity correct, but you did the same exact sound. Let's see if you can make all three sound different, your attacks. Ha! Oh, sorry, that was hard. No, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, good, like, hi, hey, huh, okay. Excellent, cool. All right, uh, let us, due to the uh, defense, so someone is taking their sword and hacking at you. So um, there's different ways to approach uh, the fight sounds. There's open mouth, there's closed mouth, there's clenched teeth. Uh, but I'm gonna let you use your own discretion. If you wanna do a, a fight reaction where you go, Ish! Or, or in the gut, or Gah! across the face, whatever. I'm gonna leave that up to you, but let's, let's make sure, we'll stick with the small, medium, large variety. So this time the sword is hitting you, so that this is uh, damage sounds. Okay, I like that last one. That last one's pretty nice. Mike, do you wanna uh, do some critiques or, or redirect? Um, you have any thoughts on? Uh, do we want to do a clinch teeth sound or? No, I was, like, I was letting you handle this one. I was going to handle okay. the next. You're going to handle the next. Okay, yeah. all right. I'll just I will stick with this one yeah. all myself, and then we'll kill you. So hold on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Murder. Yes. So be thinking of a way to kill her. <laughs> Damage. Okay, so I want to hear some guttural things. So someone is taking their sword and just like right in the gut. So give me a, a small, medium, a large guttural impact. Okay, now, I mean, those sound like impacts, but I think, you know, if you get hit in the gut, it's a little more of an oof sound, like a uh, you can you can add a throw a consonant in front of it, not just a oof, but like a yeah, some, some harsh harsh syllable, harsh 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 attack, like a K or a T. Good, like okay. I mean, those sound like pretty good damage sounds. All right, nice nice. Um, let's move to the killing. Murder. How should we kill her? Just boiled in oil, sliced and diced. Yeah, that's so mean, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> it is mean, but it's death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won't have to record. This is a kind death where you go in your sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, boiling in oil. All right, we don't need to foley the boiling oil sound. I mean, That's our sound effect track. It's already there. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh, <laughs> so I imagine that being boiled in oil would kind of hurt. Might take off a couple layers of skin. Yeah. So it's a good thing you're not mic'd. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So let's give you uh, some 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 parameters here. All right. Your death scream is going to be no more than three seconds. All right, so three second, it's got to be m louder and more intense than, than the damage sound, the big oof that you did, you were supposed to do. It's okay, it's okay, it's all right. But this is obviously the painful. Your, your character is at 1%, and then they're going to plop you in this big cauldron. This is the ultimate pain. So um, we want to have that sort of decay thing, the scream, and then you're kind of overcome with the oil burning your skin off, okay? Yeah, so skin burning. When you're ready. Taste it. Ah! 
Okay, that's pretty short. Let's actually elongate the screen. Yeah. Now, also, uh, I want to say that you know you're getting really physical with things in the world of voice acting. The microphone is a static thing that you always have to be aware of, and your mouth has to be in a certain and place. Sometimes you can hear it. Sometimes, sometimes you can't hear what you're saying if you move around the microphone too much. <laughs> so. With, having said that, I want you to pretend that there is a $10,000 mic right in front of you, so you are not allowed to do, ah, yeah. you know, do all that. It's made out of eggshell, too. Yes. So you can't hit it. Yeah, don't do that. The engineer will kill it. Will literally boil it, boil it in oil. Um, so, yeah, so I want you to see, you know, uh, we tend to stand when we record. It opens up the diaphragm. There's more energy and all that, so uh, you're in a good standing position. And just so you guys know, when you're... When you're recording, it's almost never directly into the mic, like a dead-on. It's always slightly pivoted, and plus there's a pop filter there. Yeah, there's a pop filter there, but if you do, if you dead-on anytime you say Popeye likes Philadelphia, Popeye, then you record that, and everyone hates that. Yeah, that's bad. So yes. all right, so I want the the scream is good, but let's let's make it longer, and let's see you not do any physicality to it, or not nearly as much. All right. Can you get one more that's a little longer? Yeah. Look, now he said three seconds at the maximum. It has to at least be two seconds long, too. Let's say that the animation is like between two and three seconds long of person being dropped in oil. Yeah. How about let's uh, let's give you an actual word to say, like no. So scream no. I didn't get no out of that, but that was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> That's because the flesh started melting off. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. it's like, no! Yeah. Thank you, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I will take a volunteer doing the same thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, so many choices. Blue shirt with the undershirt, second chair. Yes. Give it up for our volunteer. What is your name? Sir Galahad. No. What is your quest? To seek the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? Blue. No, yellow! Ah! <laughs> All right, and what is your real name? Don Toll. Don? Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Don, we're going to do some of the same things that Kyle just mentioned with, as a, with his volunteer. What I'd like first off from you is, let's say that this is a, uh, let's say this is like a military shoot em up fighting game, okay? okay. And sometimes we have to do hand to hand. This is going to be hand-to-hand -hand with a little blade. Mm -hmm. um, you are soldier number 7018A. Uh, 7018A. And what I need you to do is give me a three different thrusts. Okay. Three different thrusts. So like a small, a medium, and then one that would like gut them. All right. And give me like a one-second pause between each, please. Cool. Good job. Good job. Yeah, yeah. Now I'd like to do the same thing. The first and second ones were pretty similar to each other, so let me hear like a very distinct A, B, and C, with C being the loudest difference. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good job. Good job. Okay. So that's a small weapon. And granted, when we're doing a lot of shooting, the big weapon is a, is a gun, right? So that it's not like just grunting as you do that. But let's uh, let's say that we, you know, this is a game where we've lost all mechanical weapons and it's all sword blade type stuff. Uh, so once again, as with with Kyle's weapon, instead of the large sword, I would like you to have a, a gigantic hammer, like it's a hammer where the handle of the hammer is uh, the size of your body, and the metal part of the hammer is like the size of your torso. And you're swinging this thing around, so the attacks are going to be longer, right? So you right. have this huge thing, so like, it's like some big whipping around song, uh, big whipping around uh, sound. So same thing, a small and a medium and a large, keeping the size of that weapon in mind and how long it would take you to do a full attack on it. Cool, good job, good job on it.
And now we're going to flip it around. You are the guy taking both of these things. So we're going to start out with you getting a little stabby. Okay. So you get a minor stabby, good size ouchy stabby, and then an oh crap, my intestines are falling out stabby. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Cool, good job. I heard a distinct difference in all three of those. Now you are unfortunately on the business end of that gigantic hammer. So you get like you know, a glaze hit with it, a pretty good hit with it, and then a very solid knocking you on your butt hit with it. Okay. Cool, good job, good job. And now we're going to throw the variety aspect into it. This comes up a lot, as Kyle mentioned, you don't want like, oh, 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 to be the same thing you hear every time you do a game. So what I would like to hear is a series of five medium-sized attacks with a sword. So like, I would like you to attack someone at a pretty good, you know, intensity, not the fullest, but a pretty good intensity, and make each one sound a little bit different, either through consonants, uh, not through the length. They all need to be about a second, second and a half long. Okay. Okay, so not through how long they are, but and what they sound like. You know, are, you, are they clenched teeth? Are they open? Are they, is your mouth closed? Are you going to start out with a K? Are you going to start out with a T? Are you going to start out with a D? Any of those sorts of things. A series of five with a little pause between each one. And keeping the intensity to medium. Keeping the intensity the same the whole time. The difference would be what they sound like. Cool. Good job. Now's the time to die. So in what fashion? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait. I will go by raised hands because that all sounds like mismatch. That was the first hand I saw. Raised. Bludgeoned to death with an axe. Okay. So the thing with that is normally that would take several hits, right? Yeah. We're going to pretend that this is like someone like uh, Pyramid Head. All right. Yeah. So he's standing above you with an axe, and he's just like one big, and then you slice it apart like you're in a Warner Brothers cartoon. Okay. So from the cranium all the way down, but we're going to defy physics, and despite the fact that one of the first things to go is your mouth, I want you to I want to hear a scream of pain all the way down to your toes falling apart. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes, it cool. does. So okay. what I would like is this to be uh, gut riching and painful. Minimum of two seconds long, maximum of three, and I want it to be very, uh, I want you to keep in mind what's happening to you. There's going to be lots of blood, so I want to hear lots of gurgling and screaming. Mm -hmm. Okay? And between two and three seconds. Between two and three seconds, and it's going to be one, pretty much one long sound. That's pretty nasty. Give it up for him. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good job. Oh my, how do you top that? How do you top that? We got about five minutes left, so we could do like a lightning round. Some people that maybe do some Kamehameha's and some Hadoukens. And... Sure you can. <laughs> can you do it? Sure you can. Sure you can. Yes. Sure you can. All right, we got multiple volunteers. Let's, say, let's get the doctor down here. You want to come up? You want to come up? Naruto, you want to come up? Come on down here. We're going to do a, a, a lightning round of like power up yells, Hadoukens, and and all and and the like. So da 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 da. Yeah, just line up, and that's nice. Let's start here at the end here. All right, you're from uh, Left for Dead, right? Love that game. Uh, what is your name? I'm Alicia. Hello, Alicia. Hello. Hello. Oh. Hello. Yes. All right. Now, let's start with you. <laughs> Sorry, I love that voice. Anyway, um, I let's do a power up, a charge, and like let's let's go Super Saiyan. Oh God. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna leave the intensity to you, the length to you. Just one take of like, you know, some sort of like. Okay, well, we need build up though. This is a charging power up yell, like. Yeah. 
Remember, normally this takes like 10 episodes to do, so. <laughs> At least five seconds. Yes. Deep breath, deep breath. Okay, that was a quicker <laughs> Super Saiyan movie. Yeah, all right, there we go. Step in Naruto there. <laughs> That's good, okay. Can yeah. yeah. I can't, cannot over 9,000. How do you, how do you over 9,000? <laughs> Come on, you got one more in you. I know the audience is just craving it. Let it build and speak. Yep. I'll conduct you. Ready? Deep breath. And. All right, that's better. That's the best one. That was the best one. Nicely done. All right. Next up, you are. Uh, Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's um. Let's have you do a Hadouken. In Hoboken. Never He's not get joking. He's not joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Oh, that's, that's good. good. Now there's a build-up one. There's like the uh, Shinku Hadoken. You want to do like Shinku Hadoken? You know, let's let's hear the build-up with that one. Shinku Hadoken. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And then one more, I want you to elongate that Hadouken. You're, you're like a, having a, kind of a, a quick attack and decay. Let's stretch it out like Hadouken! You know, this is like the ultimate one. Yeah. Shinku <laughs> Hadouken! Yeah. Excellent. Nice. That's nice. All right. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> The doctor is in. Doctor is in. <laughs> All right. Uh, are you caught up in the uh, Dragon Ball Z universe? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. Quite. Quite. <laughs> quite. Yes. yes. Quite. Yes. Let's uh, let's just do the old gold classic. Kamehameha. <laughs> Only better than that. <laughs> yes. Come come yeah. That was a one take Jake. What's your real name, Doctor? Dan. Dan. Doctor Dan. Give Dr. up for Doctor Dan. Dan. That's one take, man. That's excellent. That's great. Um, do you have any uh, attacking yell scream ideas? Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a witness to this event. You're a witness, okay. Yeah. If, right. I, if I think of more things to help you with, I will chime in. Okay. Otherwise, okay. I'm fascinated by this entire process, Kylie Bear. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes. All right. I'm making it up as I go. But anyway, <laughs> sort of, but not really. Uh, okay, your name is? Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. All right, Jonathan, um, I'm just uh, at the top of my mind. It says, let's do a little Call of Duty action. Uh, <laughs> duty. <laughs> I said duty. duty. Heroes duty. Um, I don't call my duty anything. And then I struggle like a little homeless lady. That's my favorite line in that movie. Uh, okay, so anyway, Call of Duty. You are a soldier on the battlefield. Um, and what this is, is you need to warn your squad that uh, incoming, a missile, a something, a grenade is coming your way, so your line is incoming. I want you to do it three times. So give me three different versions of incoming! 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 Oh, incoming! <laughs> Very much into it, yes. Nice. <laughs> Now let's try, let's try a little Arnold Schwarzenegger, like, get down! Get the good jump up! Put that down! Get down, get down, get down again! Get down, get down! Get jungle down. boogie! Jungle boogie! Jungle get down. All right, so this is get down. Um, let's just combine it, let's do it. Get down, incoming! Get down! 
What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> And, and just cause we're on this Arnold kick, can you do the uh, 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 yeah, yeah, a big Arnold death. Yeah, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very much into this. Yeah. And that's the end of yeah. Total Recall. The Predator wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Excellent, sir. Thank you. And you are? Angel. Angel. All right. I love your pants. Thank you. They're very psychedelic and cool. Tie-dye sweats. Nope. Iron Butterfly. Yes. And I got a Davida. But anyway, uh, let's have you do a Shoryuken. Are, are, we sure? doing, are we doing Shoryuken, Shin Shoryuken, any kind of gradation there? Oh, yeah, surprise me. It's the Shoryuken Bar! Ooh. Someone's played it before. Nerd! Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It's like, we're all nerds. It's all good. Uh, let's see. I want you like uh, lifting a huge boulder. You can do this because you got muscles. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, let's see. Let's electrocute you to death. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, That's good. This is fun. Yeah. I like killing people. Yeah. Oh wait, the cameras are on. Oh. oh my. Is there a panel in here next to three? I'm sorry, we're running over a little bit. Oh, we're good? Okay. Yeah. All right. But we can finish up these folks, yeah. We will. We will finish the final three. Hello, Naruto. Finish them. Oh, yeah. Hi, yeah. I'm Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Good to meet you. Believe it. Believe it. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, what, what's a good Naruto attack they can do? Rasing, oh, that's nice. That's good. All right. What's uh? Sexy jutsu. Sexy no jutsu. I don't think that'll work. Let's see. Uh, let's uh, do you. Uh, let's start with a small, medium, and large punch. Like huh, huh, huh. This is a big, bigger, bigger, bigger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With a wind up. Like, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Now let's do the damage. Now Naruto's getting kicked because they're tired of him saying, believe it. Thank you. It happens. I don't believe it. <laughs> So, right across the face, right across the chin, yeah. So, medium, small, small medium, large. Okay. Yeah, all knuckle oh. sandwiches. Oh. 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 I don't believe it! <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. I stopped believing. <laughs> Jerry will hate me. Stop <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, hi, what's your name? Chris. Hi, Chris. All right. Um, you guys have audience suggestion for a scream power up yell? <laughs> swarm of bees attack. A swarm of bees attack. Not a bee! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Make it longer, though. We want you to agonize a little more. Like, the swarm is swirling around. And it's like, no, no, not the bees! Take, like, at least five seconds. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, 
that's good. Yeah. That's some lung power there. Yeah. Uh, let's complicate matters. Let's have the swarm of bees, like some of them actually like, get in your mouth while you're screaming. Ah. And you choke on them. Choke on the bees. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. That's wonderful. The bees, the bees. Okay. And then lastly, our Saiyan. I guess it's appropriate. We should do, uh, uh, I guess, a Kamehameha. Kamehameha? Yeah. But on this Kamehameha, make the ha as long as you possibly can. Like you're trying to. You're trying to fight the Death Star because universes have crossed. Okay, okay, I'm ready. My body is ready. <laughs> programming here. We want to thank you guys very much for having us out. We hope you have a great rest of your convention. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks for volunteering. Good job. Mag.com